Retiring without millions in the bank? It can be done easily, says Brett Arens or Arens <clears throat> over at Market Watch. Yeah, I'm, I'm a mess this morning. I haven't shaved, I haven't showered. Sorry, I'm just uh, getting ready for my seminar, Gen X webinar on uh, retirement planning strategies. And um, yeah, yeah, there you go, dude. Yeah, my wife's got to cut my, my hippie hair later on today. Got to shave, got to brush the pearly yellows. I'll be good. But anyway, my man Wayne sent this to me. I haven't read the article, so we're going to read it together. So uh, count me shocked where Brett Arends or Aaron's, whatever the hell his name is. And uh, I don't read that much of uh, financial planning stuff. Uh, I mean, every now and again, people send me a good article, I'll read it. Um, but generally speaking, a lot of it's just, it's, it's just rope dope stuff. The same thing they've been pushing for years and years and years. I just, I can't take it. It's so stupid. I get bored, frankly. I'm like, oh, but, uh, but this was interesting. And Brett has, I've had issues with some of Brett's writings in the past. You know, get it. See that's that? Look at that. Oh, nothing, huh? Because you're just seeing the wall, the retaining wall. That's a beautiful view there. Let's, let's see what he says here today. All right. So this is from Market Watch. June 26, 2023, Brett Arends ROI, Return on Investing. All right. And we'll see what he says. We've got a guy with his microscope. Microscope. Magnifying glass. The other day, I saw an online debate about how much you need to retire. Those in the debate, including several financial planners, were engaged in what I would only guess was a bidding war. Was $2 million enough? No. $3 million? $4 million? Who are these people, I wondered? If there are planners, who are their clients? And what are they themselves expected to do in their golden years? Then my colleague Jessica Hall covered uh, my colleague Jess my colleague Jessica Hall covered found a new number. Huh? Then my colleague Jessica Hall covered found a new number that came from a Northwestern Mutual survey. Actually, I just got that email. Some another guy just sent me that survey too. They found the average American says they need about 1.27 milli to retire. Uh, that's a lot less than the experts debated, so it must be a good thing. But how much does the average actual American have? Just under $90,000. That's not so good. What about Americans who have more than a million? They're not satisfied either. They think they'll need three million. Who are these people? A couple who retires at age 70 with 1.27 million in savings can purchase an immediate annuity at guaranteed rates themselves, a guarantee of 90000 a year. A single 70-year-old retiree with the same amount of money can buy a lifetime of income of 106000 a year. And that doesn't even include Social Security. The average Social Security benefit retired workers is about 21000 says the SSA. The average benefit retired workers that wait until 70 is 33000 which don't include spousal benefits. And they're only averages. All right. So just what are they going to spend all that money on? And more importantly, how much do people actually spend in retirement? Oh, my goodness. Here we go again. We're finally, finally saying how much do people actually spend in retirement as opposed to, oh, my goodness, I need 4% or what, 25 times my salary? Oh, it's so freaking stupid. Oh, it just drives you up the wall. So is Brett catching on? Is Brett catching on? I don't know who this guy. I've just read him for a couple years now. I like him. Social Security data says the median retired household spends 34000 a year. All right, so median. I haven't seen that. That's interesting. Let's take a look at this. Are you following me? Are you following my channel, brother man? Are you following me? If Brett Arends is out there and he follows the channel, he wants to be interviewed, I'd be happy to do so. He takes us to the expenditures of the aged chart book. Huh. Huh. Now, who was the initial person that showed you the expenditures of the aged chart book back in 2018 when Social Security Administration said, oops, we made a mistake. We should no longer use the current population survey to determine how much income retirees have. Who showed you that? Was it Brett Arends? No. Was it Larry Kotlikoff? No. Was it the money guy? Show up, just pick up. They just came by. No. His real buddy Josh. Even with his messed up hair, his pearly yellows, and his unshaven beard there. Oh, by the way, today's my birthday. So if you want to buy me a cup of coffee on my birthday, I'll put the link in the doobie-doo. I'd love to have a cup of coffee on my birthday. So today is the birthday. Today is my birthday, the big 53. My wife, they got lobster tails on sale up at Publix. So we're going to have some sirloin steak and some lobster tails. And she's going to make me a, uh, a chocolate cookie uh, whipped cream cake. When I was a kid, I wish you'd stay on topic, dude. There is no staying on topic here. If you want me to stay on topic, you're in the wrong freaking saloon, dude. I'm just, I don't know what to tell you. I just, I just yabble and rabble. And if you like to support the rabble, buy me a cup of coffee, especially on my birthday. Come on, man. 53. 
anyway, so my dad, you know, we never had sugar growing up ever. So my dad um, made me one, not me, but for one uh, one time he had a, a chocolate, they had these like chocolate uh, cookies. I can't remember what they're called. They're, they're like a yellow, I can't, I don't know what they're called, but it's chocolate cookies with homemade whipped cream. Oh, you let that sucker sit in the fridge overnight. Dude, that, that was just like the best thing you've ever had. I'll never, I was like, dude, and of course we never had sugar. So to have that was like freaking jumping off the wall. It's like going to McDonald's, man. My mom used to say, we only go to McDonald's once a year. We come back from Easter mass up at, uh, I think the St. Luke's church up there in North Portland, Maine, St. Luke's, I think it was. And, uh, and she'd say McDonald's is such a sugar, like you guys would bounce off the wall and get cranky after you had McDonald's because nothing but sugar. It's freaking disgusting. And let's keep going. So he's showing us a, a, a expenditure of the age of chart book. That's that's good stuff, man. And uh, let's see what we got here. Just using stuff from my the BLS data, which I write about my my recent book, which I will have. Um, Relax and retire, uh, debunking inflation fears. Anyway, so good stuff, man. I uh, big fan, long time, first time of the the expenditures of the aged Social Security data. Median expenditures right there is thirty four thousand eighty eight dollars a year. I imagine that's household. It doesn't say, but it says, uh, it, it doesn't say it's household. Imagine it is though. But anyway, look at that. The median right there. Some people spend less. Some people spend more. But the median, 50% of the people spend more than 34000 I just, <laughs> components of expenditures. Well, let's take a look. Oh, housing. Housing is a component. So, I, oh my goodness. All right, let me just, I guess, step. I'm just going to go for it. I don't care, man. You're going to have to listen to me or get off here. I don't care. I'm going to say it. 30, oh, all right, so the median per capita expenditure, the median is $34,000. Where was it? Um, it's on there someplace. It was $34,000 right there. $34,000. All right, that's the median. Components of expenditures. Housing is 36%. So would you stop with this idea that housing, if you're going to be spending 90000 a year in retirement, that housing is going to be a third of that. It's just not. It's 36% if your median spending is 34000 I grant you, because you still have property tax. I 100% get that. But once your freaking mortgage is paid off, your housing costs go way down. And if you're going to be living on sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year in retirement, let's just say your property tax is, is $5,000 a year. That's not 36% of your expenditures is going to housing. Oh, so freaking frustrating. I, I just, and now people will scream bloody murder, but my housing property tax went up like 40%. So inflation is 40%. I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. How much is your expenditures on housing relative to your expenditures as a whole? So if you're going to extrapolate your housing costs increased and use that for your full inflation, I just, I literally don't understand these people. I don't get it. If I'm spending $50,000 a year and 5,000 of that is on property tax, my property tax goes up 20% just for simplicity. So we take 50, 5,000 times 1.2. Now my property tax is $6,000, all right? So my inflation was uh, was 20% for property tax, but my inflation, but 1,000 divided by 50, my inflation is only 2% relative to the overall scheme of things because I spend $50,000. Does that make sense? Again, I have $50,000 of expenditures. Of that $50,000, I spend 5,000 on property tax. That's a 10% of my expenditures go to property tax. My property tax went up, what did I just say, from five to 6,000 bucks. So my property tax went up by $1,000. That's a 20% increase in my property tax. But that 20% increase when it comes to dollars that are consumed was only $1,000. $1,000 divided by $50,000 of my consumption is 2% inflation. That's it. I, I just, uh, I mean, it's nuts to me how people don't get this. Out-of-pocket health care expense. Yeah, that's not a chump change. But again, if you're at median, south, median income is $34,000 and you're spending on Part B, Part D, I'm sure that's not considered out-of-pocket, but still you're spending on, on prescription drugs. $2,000 and your median income is $34,000. Well, we take two, divide by 34. And that's 5.9% is your expenditures and out-of-pocket expenditures in healthcare. Uh, I, let's just keep reading Brett's thing here. Anyway, I love this. I love that data set. The University of Massachusetts has calculated the bare minimum will need to keep body and soul together and retire comfortably. Um, what will they calculate that? Uh, they say the average is 29,000 a year if you're single and 41,000 if you're married.
And that's if you don't own your home and have to rent. I have to read that. That's good. Sorry, good stuff, Brett. I haven't ever saw that. Why did one of you guys send that to me? How dare you guys not send me that from University of Massachusetts? How double dog dare you? Uh, that figure covers housing, healthcare, transportation, food, and miscellaneous essentials. You can check out their calculations here. So the average person seems to think they're going to need about 130000 in retirement, and that's based on they'll get $1.7 million from an uh, annuity plus the average Social Security benefit. That's quite a retirement. Of course, they won't buy annuities, probably because no one does, and probably because they want to leave money to their kids. Well, just because you buy an annuity doesn't mean you don't leave money to your kids. Personally, as long as I'm able to put off claiming Social Security in 70 and avoid some medical catastrophe, I won't need anything like this. I'm looking, I'm not looking to spend a lot of retirement. Um, that's because, like many people reach maturity, I've cracked the basic code of personal finance. I've worked all that out trying to maintain happiness by purchasing more and more better stuff as a sucker's game. Uh, hedonic, hedonic treadmill economists call it, but I don't care what economists say. I've also worked out when it comes to big ticket items like massive houses, fancy cars, and second homes, you don't own them anyway. They own you. I've had a retirement friend, retired friends who have a second home. They might as well have stayed working all the time, money and energy it costs to keep it up. Very expensive cars, local mechanics will thank you. Meanwhile, a dog from a local shelter will cost me 600 bucks. Sure, they also own you, but in a good way. Yeah, good stuff. That's a freaking fantastic art. Look at Brett, man, crushing. The hedonic treadmill is a key point, says Richard Curley. I just reached 60 over the last five to 10 years. I've increasingly come to recognize that things I enjoy, hiking, biking, reading, are very low cost. Gardening, snuggling with your pups, taking a nap, jumping in the pool. But the pool costs money. I mean, I, all these people I tell I got a pool. I love the pool. Dude. I love it. I freaking go out there pretty much every day in the summer. People are like, oh, but this time you're never going to get your money back. Dude, stop looking at it as ROI, return on dollars. Look at return on life, dude. I enjoy the pool. So what happens is I play some basketball with my kid or I jump around outside, you know, get, get outside, putting up dog, picking up dog poops, mess around the garden. I sweat like a pig. Got my freaking swim trunks right there, a little towel right there, changing my swim trunks, a little towel. Get my little book on my Kindle, jump out of the pool, get all wet, you know, freaking fantastic. Get some sun on my, make my pale skin a little bit brown, brown and black, so I can, you know, qualify for brown and black, brown and black, you know, brave and beautiful and whatnot. It's great. But you'll never get the money back. Yeah. You know why? I'm not, what? I didn't invest in the pool for money. I invested for the lifestyle. Jeez, man. Uh, retirement percentages are different for everyone, but as a young retiree, mid 50s, there are some basic items that should be done to live on 50% or less. House needs to be paid off. Most likely that's true. The university's estimates are really a bare bone budget with nothing for long. Oh, there we go. Long term care. Always long term care. Oh. Uh, having a dog is quite a luxury these days. Figuring for inflation for the last 10 years, I will need about a million bucks for a lifestyle of a 33,000. Okay, well, that's just stupid. Why? Do, Question I have is why does a couple 1.27 million? Uh, is there a penalty for being single? Oh, we talked about the annuity difference. Come on, man. Can we not, David? Can you not think this through? Why does a single person get 90,000? Uh, one oh, wait, no, that's good. Actually, that is a good question. No, right here. No, that's not a good question. It's a bad question. Why does a married couple only get 90,000 where a single person gets 106? Come on, David. Okay, I see. I thought you put it backwards. Because you're covering two lives. Ugh. The elder index is bogus. Yeah, um, it claims I'll spend uh, 562 on, oh, is that what the University of Massachusetts is? Um, the elder index. All right. Whatever. So people are going to think what they want to do. I'm spending $33,000 a year with inflation. I'll be spending, I'll need $4 million billion. Oh. Anyway. As always, if you like what we do here, don't forget to subscribe to my email list down below. Um, don't forget if you want to join my local channel, five bucks a month, I'll get you set up in Right Capital. Uh, we do live streams twice a week, man, Saturdays and Wednesdays. Um, yeah, man, we, we're pretty we're pretty consistent there. This coming Monday, I'm going to interview Bebe and uh, and Gary, who went from corporate gigs to a homesteading uh, on live on YouTube here. So that'll be fun. Um, I'm not going to be uh, interviewing going live on Rumble anymore, folks. I just uh, I'm not going to. Rumble's, um, they, they, it's a pay to play thing. And I get it. I, I think that's actually the way to go. YouTube probably should do that too, but, um, I'm not going to do that because I, I don't trust the Rumble numbers. Frankly, I just don't. I just, it's like, if I can't trust their numbers, why am I paying to play? If that makes sense. And I, I still, you know, listen to Owen Benjamin, Tom Cowan, uh, Steve Dace, uh, on Rumble, but, uh, generally speaking, I'm not going to pay if I don't think your numbers are correct. So I'm only going to be live streaming on YouTube, 
LinkedIn, Facebook, and Odyssey, uh, but not on Rumble. So anyway, those will be Monday night at 8 p.m. live stream with uh, with Bebe and Gary. Uh, corporate gig to homesteading. I think you'll get a kick out of that. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.